This is Ozark's Fox AM. Good morning. I said it last Monday, and I'll say it again, Kelly. I ha- can't. But, oh, what? Oh, I was just happy Monday because I feel like well, yeah. I say it all the time. Happy, happy Monday. Monday. I'm Jeremy Rabe, and I'm Kelly Smith, <laughs> and I can't believe it's Monday again. The weeks see, are flying by. Do you see what I'm saying now? Do I you see what I'm totally saying? get it. Last Monday, I went like this, and it was Turn Monday. Turn around every, every now, now and then. then. Yeah, it's like, it's crazy. It's like, where are the weeks going? I don't know. But I do feel bad for people who think it's going slow, because everything too. going on in the world, I know. That we're not true. trying to diminish that. No, it's no, just no, like, absolutely. But life is, uh, is kind of crazy and busy. And I wanted to tell you a little yeah. bit, just real quick. Uh, my weekend was fun uh, at the 2020 Gold Buckle Gala. Uh, at the fairgrounds. Now, they raise money for these kids who are into livestock and that sort of thing. I, I learn so much every year, and I emceed the event. I was so busy, Jeremy. My phone, my purse, everything was in the back, and I really didn't get a chance to take any pictures. But they raised over $200,000 for, yeah, for these wow. kids and their education and all. And so it was a great event, and I'm really happy about that. That's a lot of money. Yes. I, I think it was like like two twenty something. Wow, yeah. It's a lot of money. Well, good for that. Was Randy Little there? Yes, he did was. Did you tell him I said hi? I did. With your one good eye? Yeah, he, he, brought, <laughs> he brought up my one good eye. He said, he said, I've missed you. I said, yeah, I haven't seen you. He said, why haven't you come over and bought something at the store? I said, I planned to, but I actually wore something. You did, I remember. That was from a, my stage life that was um, leather and... Oh. It, yeah, that's what I wore to but the But did you wear something from PFI last week on the show? Yeah, I probably, thought you did. Probably. I think you probably. did. But for this yeah. event, I, I was going to go to Randy's and I just pulled something out of the closet. Anyway. Um, well, that is amazing. Yeah. But then, uh, first of all, brace yourself. Don't show the picture yet, but just brace yourself. Uh oh. Because I look like a little baby. I think it's like a teenager. But anyway, Saturday, I'm looking at my news feed and I see that Regis Philbin passed away on Friday, but the yeah. family told the media on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Now, you remember me telling you my story about meeting Kathy Lee? Yes. Well, the same day I met Kathy Lee, I met Reed. Of course. Of course. Okay, oh. brace yourself. There's Jeremy as a teenager. Wow. Jeremy, you know what? When I yeah. saw that picture across the room, I thought that was Velvin's son. <laughs> I, 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 it doesn't even look like you. That's what people on social media were saying. I, that was in, oh, I can't remember the year. But anyway, I, wow. was, I was in New York on a trip, and I was visiting somebody, and they actually were going to be on Regis and Kathy uh-huh. Lee. She was a national fencing champion. Uh-huh. Okay? So... She said, hey, do you want to come with me? I have to go backstage. It was on a Thursday when they record two shows. Yeah. They did Thursday Live, recorded Fridays. Yeah. We got to be backstage. Yeah. So that's when I met Alan Thick. Oh, right. And why? the celebrities. Yes. Yeah. And Regis, I'm telling you about Reg, the nicest human alive. Here I am, a nobody mm-hmm. from Texas, sitting there just like all these yeah. celebrities around. He talked to me. He was nice. He treated me the same as he treated Alan Thick and these musical guests, and he was just so kind. And those are the things you don't forget. I, I have not forgot all these years. Then Gelman came in, and he was like, Reed. You're, ta- you're talking like Reed. I, you're, Reed. You're, you're in a Reed mode. He's like, Gelman, Go ahead. what do you need? Yeah, do it. Do it. I'll tell you. He's like, Go what ahead. do you need? And Gelman's like, you got to change, Reed. We got the segment coming up with the fence. You got to change. He's like, I'm only one person. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Well, I got, I ain't got time. So then all of a sudden, we're in this smaller kind of room, people everywhere. Reed just drops his pants. What? Because he had to change clothes. Now, you and I know in the theater business, we change all the time backstage. Of course. We were backstage. Of course, yeah. We were backstage. You were in his house. I was. So I was there going, huh? Reed just drops his pants. <laughs> he was in blue boxer shorts. I'll never forget it. Okay. And he goes, what's everyone staring at? <laughs> what's everybody looking at? And I was like, I got things to do. So he changed right there with Gelman was right oh, there. and changed. Goodness. But I'm telling you, he just joked around with me, would say nice things. Yeah. I think his element was just being around people. Ah, uh, he was good. He loved he it. He loved it was, people. He did. And I'll that never is, forget that. I love that. Yeah, I saw that. And, and he was 88. Um, you know, I didn't know if he'd been sick for a while. Uh, you know, when my parents are getting up there and I'm thinking, 88's not that old, you know. Um, so it's I like. Know. It's true. My grandpa uh, just turned 85. Yeah. And I don't think about so, being. Yeah, oh. but that is sad. Anyway, it was a great memory. I love that memory. Thanks for sharing it. Yes. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry, Joe Morano here. <laughs> there you go, Joe. Uh, I was, was going to say, I saw an interview with him once, and he always said, because he does the early morning hours, right? Or he did. And he always said that he always he still lived the New York nightlife of going to Broadway and seeing plays or going to dinners with friends and mm-hmm. telling stories because he had a lot of celebrity friends that you know. And he, he, I remember him saying he always felt like he had to do that so he could have something to talk about on the show. And he just oh. said, oh, well, it's a disservice to the viewers if I can't 
bring a story and all that. So he sacrificed sleep for years and years and oh, years to do wow. that stuff. Wow, that is incredible. So good, right? Really great, Such great a human. human. Yeah, great he, human. and he really was. He was yeah. so kind. Very yeah. cool to see. Yeah. Uh, we're talking cars this morning. If you guys like cars, uh, you want to spend thirty-five thousand for a car? No. no. Not a terrible price, but I don't like to. This is for a thirty-five thousand dollar car for kids, though, because Bugatti is making it. That's what happens, guys. You know what Bugatti is? Fancy. Yes. Bugatti and the little car company have made this mini electric car called the Bugatti Baby 2. Uh, it's for kids, or aimed at teens. What? To just help them learn to drive and things. Okay. Because the speed goes about 12 miles an hour in novice mode, and then it goes to 30 miles an hour in expert mode. So right you there. just answered my question. I was going to say, can they drive this on the road? And the answer is no. I because that's too slow to be on the road. That's too slow, right? Yeah. Well, I think it's too slow to be on the highway, I would that's think. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. School zones only. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it says for, Bugatti made a car for an eight-year-old, too, though. And so where was that happening? Like, this is certainly, this isn't real cars or things, are, are they? But they are. They're electric cars, and so I'm confused about how this works. They're going to drive them around their neighborhood in the little subdivisions? That's what I would think. But Kelly. Yeah. Would your dad have gotten you a $35,000 car to learn to drive on? Let me just say this. My dad never got me a car, okay? Not that I'm bitter about it. I think people You're should be bitter. Thinking, no, Good point. I paid for my own stuff. Good point. <laughs> so who is dropping this kind of money? Why are they even making this? Why are we talking I, about this? Why guys? are we even talking about it, Joe? I don't know, Joe. <laughs> you want to move on? Know. Yeah. All right. If we watched some baseball this weekend, there was uh, no fans in the stands for these baseball games. But on TV, it didn't look that way. Fox on its broadcasts are inserting virtual fans into the field, as you'll see here. They're just kind oh, of wow. splicing the people in, and that's how to look on TV. Look at this as the camera zooms out. How do they do that? They're yeah. pumping in crowd noise. Now, also, this is happening for the <laughs> Oakland A's. See that? Yeah. That is a young Tom Hanks right there. Oh, okay? look at that. He recorded his voice yelling, hot dogs, get your hot dogs here, for the Oakland A's to pump into their stadium for the noise this year. Because as a teen growing up in Northern California, Tom Hanks sold hot dogs at A's games. Oh, he did! I did not know this. He was I a hot dog vendor. I didn't either. That's amazing. So, he ended up uh, getting into a voice booth and just said, yelled the hot dog chant that he did years and years ago when he was a kid, and the A's are going to be able to play that on the broadcast. I love like that. that. I love that. I guess it just adds energy to see people in the stands and, and, the, and the sound and everything we're used to. But I feel bad for the players because they're not seeing that, are they? They're seeing the they cardboard cutouts. They don't see it, but uh, I do know the players are hearing that. And there that was, helps. Like, I was watching that one of the games that this guy, it was his major league debut, never had been in the majors. and. The announcers are saying it's got to be so weird for this person. You dream as a yeah. seven-year-old playing in front of thousands of people, and now he finally got to the majors, but he's, they're not there. Aww. So at least that ambient noise that the players use, are used to hearing is there. You know I love I mean? that. Hey, can we pipe some of that in the studio? Because we're used to playing <laughs> on stage for a live audience. Can we do you remember, Do you true. remember the day we had the laugh track? Yes. <laughs> We gotta bring that back. We yeah, gotta bring, bring it back, back sometime. Bring back all the fake <laughs> We laugh at ourselves okay. a lot. I think that's smart. You really should do that, guys. Thank you, Joe. I need to we get you an applause you. sign for the show. Please do that. Please. Okay. We could put it on the monitor and everybody at home in their living room would be like, yes. <laughs>